going, guys? So I wanted to take another look at a passing situation between Sean G. Hibero and Dean Lister. So here we have um, a pretty standard uh, around the leg grip from Dean. However, he does not have shin to shin control, which means that Sean G. is in a great position as far as uh, his ability to back step into the saddle on this left leg of Dean Lister. Now, Sean G. is not really a back stepper into the saddle. Instead, he'd rather back step into a shin pin pass uh, in order to continue passing uh, Dean's guard. Now, both these options are totally reasonable, and I don't fault him for deciding not to go back into the saddle um, at his leg lock attempt, especially since Dean Lister, as far as leg lock goes, much higher level than Shanji is. Um, but Shanji's passing game, obviously legendary, and his guard, obviously legendary. So um, one of the things that he's going to look for is that shin pin pass mixed with the back step, and then he's going to take a look at, at trying to get head control in order to, again, manage that relative distance between his own hips and Dean's head in order to complete the pass. So we'll take a look at how this plays out. Um, he's going to first take a back step with the left leg. He's going to sit to his butt here, and again, now this is a very important uh, thing to note is that despite Shanji not going into the saddle, uh, he is still initiating uh, top rock in a very uh, classical way. Or I mean, when I say classical, I mean like a very uh, structured, uh, you know, way that is a lot like what people would do with a leg locking scenario. He has a beautiful S shape going here with his legs right here with the hip right there. Um, that shape is fantastic. He also has the underhook here on the far leg, which is a great thing to have. Um, he also has his hand posted here, right? He's not going down to, and he also has a, he has a torsion in his spine, right? So instead of his spine being straight, there's a twist in it coming up here, right? So there's, there's an angle here and a twist in his shoulders right here, um, which are at this level are torqued in comparison to his hips, which are at this level, right? So these are not parallel lines here. The parallel, the, there's not parallel line between the shoulders and the hips, and that torsion in the spine points his chest down. And when his chest is pointed down, he's going to have much better balance. It's going to be very hard for Dean to push him over to uh, Shanji's right or to bridge up, right? So this is a very important situation. Now, this, this angling right here is absolutely beautiful. It's beautiful both for an entry into the saddle, it's beautiful for passing, uh, it's really perfect technique as far as what a backstep should look like. So uh, props to Shanji for doing this um, and maintaining it against such a good grappler. Um, so also right here, uh, important to note is that Dean's knee is concealed underneath Shanji's thigh, which means that Shanji is not going to be able to enter into the saddle until that knee rises. However, there's a second option. Shanji could push his hips forward and look to lock this knee over that foot, right? If he can get the knee locked up here, then he could basically have a calf crush, right? So what that would look like is this leg right here of Shanji would be angled slightly down right here. This knee would be over the top, so there would be a lock here and a leg out that way. And then this foot right here would still be on the hip. It would be pushed forward. And so then and now you can see that Shanji's leg would end up looking like uh, Shanji's leg would look like this, and Dean's leg would look like that, right? And then right here would be that spot where you'd get the calf crush, right? So that can be a top a top version of a calf crush where Shanji's on top, comes up, looks for the calf crush. That can be used both to pass, and it can also be used to uh, to submit, right? So uh, that's an interesting option, right? So both of those are leg lock options. Again, as I said, Shanji's leg lock game, not the same level as Dean Lister's leg lock game, but his passing game is legendary, so why wouldn't he go for the pass? And this is where the last concept from the last video comes in, where uh, Shanji will be looking for head control, right? So he's going to look to control Dean's head, because if he can keep the head close to the hips or get it closer, he's going to have a better opportunity to pass. Um, especially since that implicitly takes the legs farther out of the equation. So for right here, we kind of have an overhead angle, but Shanji is going to eventually look to control the head and start swinging himself, uh, his hips closer to Dean's head to get closer to the pass. So we grab the head here. Dean's fighting it, doesn't want him to grab the head. Dean's looking for the leg try to entangle, trying to throw his leg over. Again, Shanji goes for the head, has the grip. His hips are starting to get inch closer and closer. And he's going to look for that pass. So
So he's still kind of looking for the pass. He's slowly kind of waiting out this situation. There's a lot of just pushing and pulling going on and just mainly grip fighting. Um, and now Dean's head's getting quite far away from Shanji, so the pass is getting less eminent. So he grabs the head again, looking to control and to get closer. This head grab uh, started getting a little bit better. And then as his hips got closer, he switched to the Kimura. So now let's take a pause here with the video. So important thing to note is that he went for the Kimura once his hips got very close. So his hips right here are obviously very close to Dean's chest, right? So these things don't have a lot of distance between them. Uh, and this allows him to look over for this Kimura. Now, the only thing that is potentially entangled here is this foot right here. But as you can see, there's not actually anything grabbing onto it. It's just potential for this leg to come over and trap it and so that Dean could try to get up on top. However, the problem with that is that uh, it doesn't necessarily prevent the Kimura, right? Because uh, this foot being on the inside can also be used as a sacrifice throw, which we'll see in a second from Shanji. So, uh, but the main point here is that the hips have gotten close enough to the head where uh, Shanji can not only pass, but also look for submissions, right? So um, again, you know, it's not particularly common with the exception of drop back leg locks or step forward leg locks uh, that you're going to be able to attack from top guard, um, even open or closed. Uh, but with this situation in which the, the hips get closer and closer to the head, uh, you know, the guard phases away, right? So even if you don't think of the delineation between uh, being in guard and being out of guard as just a stark line in the sand where there's a, a, a very distinctive differentiation between being in guard or out of guard is kind of a spectrum, you know, or a phasing in or phasing out of guard. Um, as you get closer to being uh, on top versus just on top in guard, uh, you're going to have more opportunity for submissions um, and you know better opportunity for positional control. And so I think that this is a good uh, a good representation of that kind of uh, more spectrum thinking versus just a line drawn in the sand because here Shanji is not 100% past the guard, but he's already looking for the submission. And the reason for that is because he knows that his hips are in a position where uh, it is the, the positioning will act more like top control than it will like top guard, uh, which I think is very high level and, uh, and a very interesting thing to, to watch and to try to replicate.